Well, today I thought I would work on Ursula a little bit. We're here in the uh, shop. Uh, of course, this shop uh, kind of doubles as a gunsmith shop, and it's kind of cluttered right now. We do uh, all of our bat house building in here, which is uh, the majority of what we do with our CNC machine. And we've got our mascot here, Benny, taking care of everything. How are you doing today, Ben? Hmm? How are you doing? You find you a chew toy and uh, got our storage. And this is uh, a, a new shop still under construction. Uh, it takes a long time to, to do it. Um, again, it takes care of our mechanical needs. Always done most of my own maintenance on vehicles. And we my son mainly does a little bit of gunsmithing out here and we desperately need to clean up and get a few things over into other places where they go you know we've still got our rack in here uh, for scooting around and working up high and that's mainly because i don't have any lights in the shop yet uh, i've got another video on habitat for bats that uh, will be produced soon how i'm making my own led lighting uh, you can see I've made the bases there already and uh, I got the rest of them over here and I'll be putting up LED lighting in here and so I want to go over to the Habitat for Bats channel and check that out when it gets up. Uh, should be doing that here um, next month or so. Just mainly saving up money to get LED lights. They're kind of expensive. Uh, but back to the topic at hand and what we're here for today. And if you're not familiar with Urals, um, you know, go take a look. There's a lot of videos out there. I, I can't really explain uh, my love for this bike. It's um, it, it's just a unique experience. It's it's old uh, design. This is a 2008, but it's based on a 1939 R71 BMW design. It's it's not the R71 BMW. It's just based on it and put together. Like I said, this one's actually a 2008. Uh, it's got 11,000 some odd kilometers on it, so what's that? 7,000 miles, somewhere thereabout. And I've always wanted a sidecar rig. Uh, actually, I wanted a three-wheeled rig. Um, I wanted a three-wheeled motorcycle, and I looked at the trikes, I looked at the spiders, and there's just something about the sidecar that I guess is kind of just quirky and awkward like me. So. That was an appeal, but the other main appeal, as my dog tears everything apart back here, uh, was the dog, so that he could ride along with me. And you see videos of that. He loves to ride um, in the sidecar. He just he gets his goggles on and rides along. It's quite a sight to see, but it's immeasurable fun. You won't go anywhere fast on these, but you'll go. And it's not really the destination it's more the going and you can see I've got my um, boots over the handlebars trying to keep my hands warm I've been trying to ride when it's cold we're here in Georgia so it doesn't get real cold but especially this year but still when it's 45 degrees outside and you're riding down the road um, it, it gets quite cold on the fingers and I guess this will just be a standalone video I'll, I'll do another video on the actual work and just walk around and show you the bike in this one. And of course you get your spare tire. And what I do for Benny, for him riding, is I take the seat out because he's 80 pounds. He's a rather largish dog. And I have two tethers. He wears a harness. I have a tether connected in the tow well. And that hooks to a loop on the front of his harness, and it's just slack enough he can move around. And then in the trunk, let's open that up for you here. We go in the trunk, if you can see, this is all dog stuff here. I have connected down in the bottom basically a cross tie lead. This would be found at horse supply or tractor supply someplace. Um, I put a, a small chain between those two points and added an extra nut on the top to secure it to give some place to hook this in the middle and 
I've got this flat cross tie. I just pull it out and hook it on the back of his harness and close the trunk down on it and it stays. Uh, it's, it's not sharp so it doesn't cut anything. And that's how he rides. I try to keep him loose enough that he can move around and be comfortable but not so loose that he can exit or especially he can't climb up on me. After we've been riding for a while he thinks he should be able to crawl up in my lap. Uh, he's an 80 pound lap dog. So he wants to crawl up in daddy's lap while he's riding and we can't do that so he can just get his nose over to me and kind of nuzzle which is fine and uh, that's really about it I do have both windshields on here I tried Benny with the windshield and without the windshield um, when we're riding I took the windshield off because he was always sticking his head out and putting his nose in the wind I thought well it seems to crowd him a little bit. I'll take the windshield off and see how it goes. And he, uh, he didn't seem to like that as much. Um, he still leaned over, but he then had trouble uh, getting out of the wind, and he was ducking down, getting into the, the tow well, and coming back up. So I put the windshield back on, and after he's been riding a while, he'll get comfortable and sit behind it, and then when he wants to, he'll stick his head back out and get in the wind again. And the windshield's not as milky as it looks in the video. I don't know, I guess it's just the way the cast, the, the light is cast across it. I don't know, yeah, that one, I'm directly behind it. It looks nice and clear, but this one, huh, I don't know. It's, through the camera, it looks a little milky, but through the eye, I mean, yeah, you can see it's plexiglass, but it's not as milky as the camera makes it out to be. Not sure why, just refracting light. But, uh, Again, Ural, you know, this one has reverse. Uh, I did add a reverse shift lever to it, uh, the raceway kit. And that's connected down there. It used to just be a lever you had to reach down or try to kick with your foot, which I found difficult with the carburetor uh, air intake in the way. So I like the hand shift lever. And, you know, you get a, a parking brake. You can actually lock it down, get a parking brake. There's not much need to secure this when you go out and park. You take your key with you and, you know, I like to lock the trunk, but uh, not many people know about these and I leave it in reverse. So if anyone tries to steal it, it's going to be more comedic than anything. Get over here. Just kind of show it. It was um, when I got Ursula. Uh, 2008 tourist it was in good shape uh, it needed a lot of cleaning I probably spent a half a day going through and cleaning all the nooks and crannies and and really getting some of the built-up crud off of it did a little bit of polishing but by and far I've not had to do a tremendous amount to it I did uh, pull the fuel tank off and clean it it had a bunch of gunk in it and the crossover pipe in the fuel tank was stopped up uh, cleaned that out um, clean the air filter on it. Uh, I had to replace the carburetor flanges that were uh, just deteriorating. This one actually had a, a kind of a small leak I figured out once I took the flange off. And I did pull both carburetors and clean them. They were actually fairly clean, um, but I rejetted them with uh, 30 main jets and 45 idle jets and did a full cleaning on them. Uh, the mixture screws adjusted one and a quarter turns out instead of one and a half turns. Uh, when I turn them out to a full one and a half, the factory setting with those new jets, it pops quite a bit uh, when it's cold. And even when it's warm, I was getting a little popping right in the 1100 to 1400 RPM range. By backing it uh, or tightening it on into one and a quarter turns out instead of one and a half, uh, it's still cold nature. It'll still pop if you try to accelerate while it's cold, but once it warms up, the popping's completely gone. And just watching the fuel mileage now, I'll continue to tune and tweak, and I may change the idle jet for a smaller one or a bigger one. Well, definitely not a bigger one. 45 is pretty large. Uh, but I might drop it back down. We'll just see how it goes. Had a couple of shims in it. Uh, took those shims out. I just wanted to, to get... Uh, kind of in a known state and this is based off suggestions by Gene at Hollow Paul Ural down in Florida. 
So I just wanted to get to a known good state and tune from there and see how it goes. Um, put the K&N filter in it instead of a paper filter. Clean that up. That had an effect uh, on the power as well. The paper filter seemed to have more restriction to it than the K&N uh, filter did. Of course I did a full oil change. I went with the Valvoline 4T motorcycle oil and uh, you know the brakes are good. I inspected those um, it does have an internal oil filter. It's not a spin-on filter. It fits up in this housing. It, there is an adapter to change it. My cross pipes are kind of in the way for that, but you know, I'm okay. Uh, it's not hard to change. That's one of those things where, you're, to me, you're doing an upgrade for the sake of an upgrade. Uh, the oil filters are available. They're not hard to change, so I, I don't really feel compelled to change the oil filter out to a spin-on. I'm okay with it like it is. Um, don't see a performance issue with it. Um, again, uh, you know, just kind of showing off the bike. That wasn't my original intent when I started the camera in this segment, but hey, you never know what you're going to get here. Uh, these videos are just going to be um, relaxed and highly unstructured. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you're a relaxed and highly unstructured person, you're probably going to get along fine. If, if you uh, like everything down to precision timing and all topics related, eh, maybe not. Uh, oh, I did have to put a new battery in it. I actually had my son put a new battery in it. Uh, wow. I, I, <laughs> I don't know. I, I think in, in the factory when they build this bike, they put a battery on the line and then they assemble a motorcycle around it. Um, as a result, it had the original 2008 battery that, that was in there. It had not been replaced. And I, while I was stunned that it was actually still <laughs> able to turn over the bike, um, it was definitely weak. And I'd actually, it, it could get in a compression stroke position where the battery didn't have enough power to actually kick the bike off and I'd had to use the kickstart to just turn the engine over and get it to some place where it could get a running start and crank up so eh, we'll replace the battery how hard can that be <laughs> uh, yeah it, you know thought would just take the seat off and then I started watching videos and it was um, we did manage to do it without taking the starter off, but I, I thought we were going to have to take the starter off to get that battery out. Uh, we had to pull some wires away, pull some tubings off, take the air box out, uh, get it out of the way, and we were able to, uh, we took the seat off uh, because it just allowed easier access. Uh, took all the wires off. We were able to tip it and just squeeze it in there and we got a new battery in so hopefully I won't have to do that for another um, 30 years um, just make it last as long as I can and I, I plan to ride a lot um, more than I expected just riding uh, I, I don't know my wife says this is my midlife crisis and if that's what it is that's fine uh, as midlife crises is go it's cheap and just a ton of fun. Uh, I am going to get the cowling repainted. Uh, I think the previous owner, I, I don't know if he did it or if the uh, place he bought it did it. I, they just took a can of rattle can black that didn't even match the bike and uh, sprayed it and it ran. So I'm going to pull that off, sand it down, repaint that. Um, probably before too long. When it does get so cold I don't want to ride is when I'm going to really start taking things off and fixing it, um, tweaking it like I want to. But right now I've been riding. Uh, I've ridden all the way into January and you know it's 45. I'd go out today on it uh, you know, if I wanted to. It just uh, It's just a blast to ride. I love to hop on it and just go to the store or go uh, go up to the uh, post office with it. Uh, we had a, a call about some bats that had gotten to, into a house. A guy wanted some help there, and I got on it and rode it up there. And uh, you know, one thing we did get this for uh, for Habitat for Bats uh, is I do plan to you know use it as PR. We're eventually you will see bat wings on this thing at some point. We'll be riding in some event with it. 
Um, but we also want to do bat surveys. We have bat surveys that need to be done in the area where you put a recording device on a vehicle and you drive along these back roads for 20 or 30 miles uh, recording bat calls. And this, this bike is perfect for that. Um, we can just get out there and, and go and it beats sitting in a car you know, on some nice cool summer evening just cruising at 20 to 30 mile an hour down some back roads or logging roads who knows um, th this is going to be perfect for that uh, when we get out there so I guess I should end this video now and start the one where I actually do some real work but I uh, hope you enjoyed it uh, subscribe there's no telling what you're going to see on here uh, it's you know, going to mostly be Ural related and puppy related over here. We got Benny, he's making a mess, I'm sure. But, uh, and you can see the shave spot on his head's where he had surgery recently. We had to have a growth removed. And that was uh, three weeks ago, I guess, and it's starting to heal up. It's doing better. But he was upset because he couldn't ride the motorcycle for a week and a half he had stitches and he could not ride the motorcycle and I would leave and he would stand at the door and just pout wouldn't you say hello yeah you hear the roosters you hear them you wanna go meet the roosters we got a new rooster I think so anyway hope you all enjoyed the video there will be more to come well, Benny, they were supposed to go get one rooster. I don't think somebody can count. What are they doing in your dog pen? Huh? Well, this is what the ruckus was. We'll turn them out with general population before too long, but... They're in Benny's uh, little holding pen here. We'll mix them in tonight.